Hey guys, Jim here. We're going to step right into Guest Blade episode number 24. What we're going to look at today is a knife that uh, might be one of, if not the most highly anticipated knife of this series. A lot of you have begged me to do a review on one of these. As you know, it's almost impossible to get your hands on one. And I myself have a serious crush on this knife. This is one of my ultimate grails. And you guys might recognize it from just looking at that. That's right. That is the symbol for the Epicenter. Todd Rexford, Epicenter XL, in the hot hammered finish. Oh, 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 oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, this is an exciting day for me as well. I would love to thank the person that sent this in, but this is a, it's a good friend of mine who prefers to stay anonymous, so I'll just say anonymously, thank you. He also sent me a Marsh Vanquish and a pretty kick-ass Mayo, so it was a pretty expensive mail call the day that this box arrived, but uh, got to tell you, I am super ridiculously crazy excited about this knife. Now, we're going to talk about the knife a little bit, we're going to talk about why it's so amazing, and then we're going to talk about the price of it, because it could be insane. So let's give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison, a, uh, what I think is going to be a laughable comparison, of the Todd Rexford Epicenter versus, da -da -da! yeah, the Boker Rexford Epicenter, yeah. So I'll give you guys a size comparison here. We shall go butt to butt. So you see that the uh, the XL is tremendously larger than a standard epicenter. Obviously, there's going to be no way to compare the quality of the two. These are entirely different knives. One is a complete full house custom. One is a ninety dollar production knife that's known for lock rock and all kinds of other issues but this was the knife that I said well you know what I can't get on the Todd Rexford books you can't get his knives I'm gonna have to be happy with this and I have been I love the feel of this knife in the hand I've said that a zillion and a half times on all the uh, the commentary that I've done on this I love the way this feels this feels the exact same except obviously much larger and with this texture in the hot hammered finish. And it really is, as the name would dictate, a hot hammered finish. He is literally beating on this titanium over and over and over with a special little hammer to create this random and unique pattern. And it really is a, uh, a love it or hate it kind of thing. I've heard a lot of guys say that no matter, even if the knife was free, they wouldn't take that ugly bastard. It looks like something that came out of, you know, like a human remains out of a fire. I mean, I, I just heard everything that you could possibly hear. And i got to be honest with you, at the right price, I'd be happy with a hot hammered. Now, I've seen some, some hot hammered versions with different anodizing that brought out lots of different colors. This is very, very subtle. You'll see some colors getting picked up, but I don't think it's due to anodizing, really. I, I think it's just going to be the, the way the light bounces off of it. You can see a little bit of color coming back from the uh, where the lanyard hole is. I don't know what it is. My camera has not wanted to focus the past few videos. I apologize. There you see the titanium standoffs. There's your blade stop. The Epicenter logo done into the jimping on the blade. Nice custom thumb studs. And there's the centering. Hmm. It's off a little bit to the right here. We'll take a look at some of the details from production to custom. I gotta tell you, visually, Boker did a pretty damn good job. Obviously, the thumb studs are much different. My thumb studs actually will cut you a little bit, but whatever. Very similar on the pivots. 
Overall, they did a pretty good job aesthetically. Went obviously a lot cheaper on the clip, so you've got a nice, nice 3D contoured titanium clip here. Monster size blade. This thing is huge, but look at the beautiful hand rub satin. It is damn near flawless. And my friend takes really good care of his knives anyway. He carries them, he uses them. He's not just a collector that likes to look at pretty things, but he does actually carry them. But like me, he takes good care of his stuff. That is gorgeous. Now, the unfortunate thing is when we start talking about pricing, I really can't give you the retail price because I have no idea what Todd charges for these uh, as a table price. While I'm rambling here, I'm going to give you some size comparisons to uh, other large knives. There it is up against my bodega. Dwarfs the bodega. RJ Martin Q36. Much bigger than both of those. Let's do something stupid here. Up against a freaking Medford Praetorian. It makes a Praetorian look small. That's quite the feat. All right, so I don't know what he charges for them, especially in the hot hammered, especially in the XL. Uh, but in general terms, a standard Rexford uh, epicenter from the maker should run you somewhere on eight to nine hundred dollars. Maybe in a hot hammered and an XL, maybe you're looking at let's say as much as twelve hundred dollars. That's a good premium price on a good quality knife. This is super smooth. The pivot's a little bit tighter than I would personally prefer, but that's just a simple adjustment. And honestly, that's most likely why the blade is slightly off-center. If we backed off the pivot a little bit, made it a little bit lighter, it would actually bring the blade back around. So that might just be an adjustment issue. So here's the thing. Uh, let's say, let's give it $1,200. You're going to pay anywhere from $4,000 to $6,000 for this knife, period. And this is, you know, I went off on my whole ramble uh, a week or so ago before the New York Custom Knife Show about secondary market and how utterly insane it's gotten. You know, there are some really great knives out there that a lot more people could get their hands on if they were more affordable. Well, I don't want to say more people because the reason why they're going so crazy in the pricing is because they're limited nature. So uh, I have to correct myself on that. You're going to pay a shit ton of money for this knife. This is a damn good $1,000 knife. I would even say this would be a damn good $2,000 knife, especially considering the status of how limited it is. Would I put out four or five or $6,000 for one? Absolutely not. No way. Would never happen. For that amount of money, you could either get several really great knives that are every bit as good as this, or you could buy one at the same price that would be head and shoulders above what this knife offers. Because again, let's break it down to its components. 6AL4V titanium, hot hammered, a little bit of uh, finishing done to it. You see the blade stop from the, the, the side. You see two screws for your standoffs. Another screw back here for the other standoff. Obviously visible pivot, visible uh, thumb studs. Very plain titanium, 6AL4V titanium clip. 6AL4V titanium lock side. More exposed hardware, more exposed hardware. Nice standoffs, by the way, on that clip. Love how that's done. So then you go back to the video, I'm going to be referencing this a lot. You go back to my video where I visit Stan Wilson's shop, and you see what a $4,500 knife should be. No visible hardware. All completely made of Damascus with titanium liners inside. Everything hand-polished. Everything, uh, portions that are jeweled. 
pieces of solid gold inside for his nameplate so you can read his name inside of it. Completely hidden spring for the double action. Completely hidden pivot. Completely hidden button to release the automatic portion of that knife. Every single component, everything massaged by hand. No CNC, no water jet, no nothing. And you could have as many as a hundred hours of labor into that one knife. This is a friggin' great knife, but it's not that level. It's not a Michael Walker. It's not, oh, and that's even unfair because Michael Walker's you're not even going to get for four, five, and six grand. You'll pay six to seven grand for a little teeny tiny uh, nail flicker. Uh, let's, you know, just try and keep that in comparison. At this price range, you could buy three Neil Blackwoods. Oh, even more maybe. You could buy <laughs> five or six R.J. Martins, which really is going to be in the same quality grade as this Rexford. Completely different kind of knife, but the same quality grade and same level of, of respect and status out there among many of the collectors. Not everybody. You could be looking at uh, getting a couple mayos for this money. You could get a couple of birches for this money if you bought it right. You still may pay dollar for dollar this against the birch, depending on the model. But it sure doesn't take away from the fact that this is a badass knife. It's beautiful from every angle. Again, you have to appreciate the hot hammered finish. Let's get some of the light away from there. There we go. Now you can see how deep those impressions are. There's a nice amount of work in all areas of this knife. But this market has just run away with itself. I just watched an auction start up on one of the forums. I won't say what knife it is or anything else. It's a knife that, you know, the usual base price on what that maker does is usually going to start around four grand. The very first friggin' bid on it, $4,500. They immediately went to $6,000, then nine, then $10,000. Instead of somebody going, hey, uh, I could get a good deal here if I bid low, or other people could kind of get involved. I, if I've got $10,000 to spend on a knife, I'll just keep bidding it up anyway. Start it at a reasonable level, and then increase it at reasonable levels. Now all of a sudden that knife has turned into a $10,000 knife. I think it's honestly worth it. But that's just the first day of bidding. It's going to get crazy. We're allowing the market to just go absolutely insane on some of these knives. One of these days I will own an Epicenter. I want a regular size, not the XL. And it doesn't have to be hot hammered. I'm actually completely in love with just the standard blasted tie. I think it looks fantastic. Because I want to use it as a carry knife. So to spend, and by the way, it's the regular sized Epicenters that go for the most, five and six grand. For me to take a $6,000 knife and put it in my pocket every day and actually use it, I'll be honest with you, I'd be hard-pressed to do that. And I probably wouldn't do that when I really think about that. But when I'm spending $900, $1,500, sure I will. If I spend $2,500, sure I will. But that would be my threshold on this knife. You know what, I, honestly, I probably wouldn't even go that high. I would say two grand is my limit on it. Because I figured that's right about double what the maker's price was. So sure, you're going to pay for it for the exclusivity. You're going to pay for its limited, you know, uh, status. But I'm not buying a, a knife for bragging rights. I'm buying it because I love it. There's something about it aesthetically pleasing. Uh, it feels good in my hand. It works well for its intended purpose. Or it has a particular feature that I find particularly attractive. You guys know I love my RJ. I love it because of how it flips. That was the standout feature for me. 
I just bought another one at the New York show that's going to be delivered to me in a couple of days whenever the mail actually gets here. That was one of my end-all, be-all kind of knives. I paid out my ass for it. But I did that because I had to wrestle it away from somebody. You know, the, the lottery price on it was $1,500. Not on, not on that one up there, but the one I have coming to me. Worth every single penny of it. Zirconia, Mother of Pearl, Timascus, Damascus Blade. Certainly worth it. But I guarantee the other ones that went out there that people are, had bought, they're going to go for three to $4,000 without a doubt. Would I have paid three to $4,000 for it? No. I think RJ is one hell of an amazing guy. I think he's a hell of a great knife maker. I don't see that knife in question being worth that much. I don't see my Q36 being worth the 1800 to two grand that they're typically fetching right about now. This is a great $875 knife, which is what it costs from the maker with the Lightning Strike Carbon Fiber Backspacer. Not 15, 17, 18, 2000. So for me, that's where I'm at. There are still plenty of people out there that are going to buy at crazy, ridiculous prices. There's nothing I can do about that. I'd love to say that we can all speak with our wallets and it's never going to happen and the market will finally come down, but it's probably not going to. I certainly don't want to tell people how to spend their money. I'll make my suggestions, of course, if it helps the market, but those guys don't give a shit about the market. They go, I want that. I'm going to put it in my pocket. I can afford to spend $6,000 on a knife. Well, that's fine. That just means less for the rest of us, I suppose. Could I spend five or six grand on this? Yeah. I spent more than that at the show this past weekend. But do I want to? No, I can't justify it. If I had come across a dream Ron Best sitting on a table for $5,000, I would have walked out with one knife for $5,000. But that's a different level than this. I honestly want this knife so I can carry it in my pocket and cut shit with it. Pull it out and show my friends and go, hey, look at this really cool texture. Look at this awesome finish. But if I would have spent 4000 or 5000 or more dollars on this knife, I'm not sure that it would actually go in the pocket. And not really, not just because of how much I spent on it, but because of how much it's supposedly worth right now and to how much you would think it would appreciate in the future. Well, if it's worth, let's call it 5000 right now, well, in 10 years, will it be worth 10000 Well, now if I take it and I carry it every day, I've got all kinds of nasty marks all over it that I can't get out of this hot hammered finish. And... I'm cutting down some cardboard boxes one day and I run across a couple of those brass staples and I just destroy my blade. Did I just ruin a $10,000 investment for the future? And it really sucks to have to think about a knife like that. That's a tool. It's a tool. It's a tool or it's a personal defensive weapon. It's whatever you want to use it for, but it's meant to be used. So this is one that if I had spent the money on it, I would just be admiring it. It would be sitting in a case. I would pull it out and I would fondle it and I would touch it and I would rub it. Give it a little bit of butt action. For $5,000, I better get a lot of butt action. That's all I'm saying, Bunny Ranch. But I don't think I could actually bring myself to doing what I do with every other knife. Use it. It's really amazing to be able to sit here and say, I'm holding a real epicenter. It would be even more amazing to say, I own a real epicenter. Because Todd clearly put a lot of work into this knife. And it came out beautifully. Nice, smooth action. Great finish work. Precision all the way through.
But at those prices, it's going to keep me and a lot of others out there just dreaming. Well, there you go, guys. There is a nice close-up HD look at probably the only Todd Rexford that will ever be on my channel. I'm still going to try. I'm still going to keep working it to try and get one for myself. But I can make you the promise that if you ever see an epicenter on my channel that belongs to me, I didn't spend double or more than double the maker's price. So yeah, you'll probably never see one. There it is, guys. I'm going to go for now. I've got some more videos to get uploaded. I hope to see you guys soon.